Welcome everybody to today's Trauma Recovery Podcast. And I'm going to be talking to a very special guest who we have connected in the past and I think spoken about a very similar subject. But today we're gonna be looking at a couple of tools. One is RTM, which we can go into a little bit more detail in relation to what that actually stands for, and also timeline therapy. So I'd like to welcome, give a very warm welcome across the other side of the pond or sea, ocean, miles away. Doctor. Universe, universe. <laughs> yeah, universe. <laughs> um, Dr. Bridget Kersop. Welcome, lovely. Hello, nice to be here. And nice to uh, finally have the opportunity to connect again. So I'm really looking forward to this conversation to look at some of the tools because there are so many when it comes to um, unraveling trauma. So tell me a little bit about your passion behind why you love working with in such a specific field which is trauma. Okay so I guess my passion um, because I, I used to be a GP so um, I saw a lot of people who with mental health problems that were related to trauma. Um, and I guess it's almost like I didn't think of them as trauma to start with. I just thought, oh, this has happened and this is the result. And I didn't really sort of label it as trauma. But when, when I left being a GP and um, started being an NLP sort of trainer, a master trainer, then... I realized that the things that um, people were dealing with were actually related to specific incidents and specific um, consequences in their neurology. And um, once I'd left general practice thinking, you know, that I wasn't, I was just scratching the surface really. And everyone that I was sending off for counseling, CBT, um, any other sort of therapy, they were still coming back and they still had the issue and I didn't know what to do with them then. Um, so once I started uh, using NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming, and realized that um, these changes um, happen very quickly in the first place, so often trauma happens you know, as a specific incident quite often, although sometimes trauma sort of Cat, you know gets chained together over time but because they happen very quickly NLP gives you the tools to just rewire that in an equally quick um, way and I, I don't think when I was a GP I hadn't I didn't even really know I had an unconscious mind uh, more than anyone else did which is a bit embarrassing now but because we make these decisions and we wire things in and they stay in unhelpful parts of the brain, um, what I really like is that NLP just reverses that um, really, really quickly. And, you know, when you talk to people who've had specific trauma, um, sort of veterans and um, people with domestic violence, all sorts of different ways of getting trauma, um, they've often spent a long time just working through what, you know, what other people think might help. And when I, when I started doing NLP, I realized that particularly phobias were, you know, you can get rid of a phobia in half an hour, um, that people actually made decisions to, um, it's almost made decisions neurologically to keep something in a particular bit of the brain that is particularly unhelpful and that you can actually change those decisions and um, you know just get rid of those really really quickly and that that includes you know things to do with health PTSD um, all sorts of things that people sort of almost wire into their thinking and then it becomes their reality so you know NLP and and timeline therapy in particular and now um, using somatic memories rtm um, i always used to get that the wrong way around it's um, the rtm i was going oh, rmt and uh, it, it is reconsolidation of traumatic memories and it's it's just the most amazing thing that i've come across really because you know having been trained in it now um so it's sort of like a variation 
of using things that we we learn about in NLP anyway. That you know, it takes less than five hours to get someone. Well, we've got 100% success rate, but you know, in in randomized controlled trials, it's about 90 to 96%. Um, you know, that 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 just goes, and I'm thinking, oh, I wish it had been around when I was a GP. Um, and and I should I should be retired and um, sort of um, sitting down by the river and just sort of being probably. But the, these sort of techniques just make huge difference to people's lives. They've made difference to my life as well. And you know, I just feel well. You know, I just want to carry on doing it. And you know, we've 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 recently set up a community interest company well I say recently about it's getting on for a year now so we've been helping people with their trauma um for over a year although a lot of that's been spent also doing processes and policies and all the the really boring and admin -y sort of things that um you know I just want to get on and help people but you've got to have a structure when you've got a, you know a community interest company so so I you know I use use these techniques in both my um in my own company and in the community interest company and we, we're starting to look for funding and um partners and people to support us now we've got everything else in place but we've also been treating people in the meantime with 100 percent effectiveness that's um really so I, I, powerful. You know, yeah that's I really, just, wow. <laughs> yeah, really really powerful how do you see RTM integrating with the mainstream services? Um, I think that, uh, you know, at the moment, the people that it's called research and recognition um, company that's spreading out the training and um, they're in the middle of talking to um, see how we can get this recognized by NICE yeah. so that um, people because and I know this is um, probably not a very politically correct thing to think, but there are things that help people that aren't recognised by NICE. And because the NHS has to look after its funding and where, where it puts its funding, then often things like NLP and RTM um, aren't looked at because there is less evidence base, even though everyone who uses them know it completely works and works often a lot better than other things. Mm. So, so I think that, you know, what we're doing is looking um, for people to partner with that are, you know, happy to say, well, you know, these are the results from the trial. This is the results that these people have been having. Um, let's give this a go and, um, you know, do some more work on it. And, and then we can spread it out. Um, in the meantime, you know, people who've been through um, what's called um, other services in the NHS or privately that don't include these things are still sitting there, perhaps with symptoms that they still still getting triggered, still getting nightmares, still low mood, you know, often suicidal. Yeah. And I, I just think, well, that's a shame. Um, and, you know, I probably um can't influence that but I, at least we can get the word out and say well you know we know this works if, if you're prepared to work with us and um do some um some of the well do the 96 or 89 or whatever it is steps that actually change that memory into something that is just a story rather than something that it, um gives you that sympathetic response which stops you from working and having effective relationships and things then you know we're, we're here to help people do that and the more people that get trained in that the more mainstream it'll become and um, i'd just like to be you know at the, in there at the beginning with um you know the people that trained us and um doing things so if there's anyone listening that's um from the NHS or any other services that haven't heard of RTM and um, timeline therapy, please get in touch because you know we've the the tools that we use are um, incredible. And um, you know, having been a 
GP and the medical director. It's just, mm. you can trust me because I'm a doctor. I'm not sure whether. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I have actually got a sign saying, um, trust me, I'm a doctor. And sometimes people have medical um, traumas, don't they? And, you know, in childbirth and, you know, in loved ones dying. And There's getting so educated. many now. There's so when I was um, training many moons ago, it was, it was, you know, sexual abuse, neglect, like four basic ones. When I was writing the book, there's like a whole list of traumas, so many now. There just seems exactly. to be so many, which I had absolutely no awareness of whatsoever before. Yeah, and I think, um, you know, even, even on a, a personal level um it, during covid mm. some of it's been quite traumatic um and you know you're not aware that you're necessarily wiring these things in and i'm just sitting at home and doing you know uh, we're back face to face now but you know doing doing my own thing sitting in the garden um but just listening to the news um can be quite traumatizing as well and I think there's a whole load of um, work, frontline workers that are going to have PTSD. Um, I think after the SARS epidemic, um, they, I think about, is it about 70 percent of people who worked in the health service had some form of PTSD. And I think yeah. while we're acutely in it still at the moment, I think down the line, there will be some people that, you know, are really struggling and you know, emergency workers, um, there'll be people that are struggling because they've lost their jobs, their houses, their loved ones. I, I think it's going to be, you know, it is huge, um, particularly after the epidemic. And I think, you know, it gives an opportunity then to, for other people to come and say, well, actually, I've been traumatised because I was, you know, in a football stadium where everything came crashing down or I was... You know, I've had this awful car accident and uh, people died and, you know, I've been beaten up by my partner or whatever for many years. And of course, there's all the, the people around who've had adverse childhood experiences that may be not so, um, you know, acute, that timeline therapy will help um, and, the, you know, the, the RTM helps people mainly who've got what we call bookmarked trauma. So they were safe and then something happened and then they were relatively safe again. And you can run that um, as, as a sort of a movie in your mind. Um, whereas timeline therapy helps people who've, you know, had um, adverse childhood experiences um, from their perspective. Um, and wired things into their head about not being good enough and you know um, you know just general negative chatter that stops them from moving on with their life so yeah I think what's been really interesting when I've been speaking to people and the work that I've done over the years is that even though the trauma can be different different experiences it seems that there is a pattern that that follows that people follow so denial, they go through the denial and then they start discovering that there's a new perspective, that there's a new way to see things, they start healing and recovering. Do you find that there are similar, I can never say the word, similar arises between the process that people go through when they're looking to heal trauma? Yeah, I, I, I think so. I, I think that by the time that we get to see people, there are many years as that have passed since since the trauma has happened and they've worked with quite a few people to to start to heal. And it, it's, it's, it's like um, it's a bit like bereavement, isn't it? So, you, you know, maybe you get a bit angry to start with and you de you know, then you deny it and then. I can't remember the steps in bereavement, but there's certain things that you go through. And I think people go through that with trauma. And I think sometimes people feel traumatized quite quickly. And sometimes it takes quite a long time to feel it, to, for it to come out. And, I, I, you know, I, 
I don't know whether that says so if you took someone that was working in casualty or intensive care or something they they're sort of feeling stressed and overwhelmed but the actual trauma side of things because they're keeping going and because people like that tend to be I've got to keep going then then it's not going to come out for a long time and um you know and then people go off and can't cope and end up not being able to go back and yes I think I think there is a cycle and we're, we're probably where we would sit would be the end of it yeah so, <laughs> well uh, so, I don't know I do sort of ping pong back every now and again <laughs> that's for sure <laughs> yeah but it's and, that's okay uh, that's just I think that's just that's the nature that's the nature of that mm. So I guess what the RTM does is move move things from a, the center from the part of the brain that gives you all the sympathetic um, fight flight sort of things, and because RTM restructures the memory, then it tends to move it to um, a different way of dealing with it in the brain. Yeah, and it becomes then just a story, and um, yeah. Uh, I, I guess there may be some things, um, particularly with people that have things for a long time and maybe less acute, that if the boundaries aren't there and people um, sort of, um, you know, are with people that perhaps don't serve them or they don't, they're not doing the habits that serve them, then there is something about putting it back. Yeah. Uh, but I think um, there's a lot of evidence from the RTM over several years that, you know, it's, it, it's, it stays gone generally, which is, which is amazing, isn't it? It's, it's, in, it's incredible when you think that, you know, I, I have found it very hard to access mental health services. And I know so many people that have had bad experiences within mental health services. And the amount of medication that is prescribed to help people to cope with what is it what is actually trauma but it's masked yeah. by something else it's quite incredible to think that you can have a much easier way of, way to heal much more quickly but the sad thing is is that we don't have access to it i know and I, i'm thinking that you know particularly with the cic um while well, people um, do pay a reduced amount to come and see us at the moment privately. Mm. Um, you know, we are looking for funding to be able to um, help people. And once we got that funding, then we'll be able to offer people a more, um, what's the word, a more tailored to their, their um, ability to pay sort of, exp you know, sort of um, um, uh, status, if you like. Um, yeah. So really, that that's that's why we're doing what we're doing because we've seen, you know, particularly to to the directors. Um, Judith is a um, used to be a consultant in casualty, a consultant nurse, um, and I've been a GP and a medical director. So we've had firsthand experiences of a the things that have caused trauma, and b yeah. the effect of trauma that keep coming back. It's uh, it's a real it's just, unique perspective. It's a very unique mm -hmm. um, perspective and uh, amazing insight. So just for me, for RTM, so what does R what hang on, RT yeah, RTM stand for? Yeah, so it's reconsolidation of traumatic memories. So it's basically um, about it, it's something that was developed after 9-11 and were used with the survivors from um, you know, from, from the towers collapsing and also used with a lot of veterans um, across the States. So it's been widely used in the States and is, is over here now. Um, and it, it, it doesn't really involve having to talk about the trauma at all. Um, we, we access the trauma very briefly just to make mm. sure that we can actually run what the trauma was as, as a movie. But then what we do is we change that movie very quickly and any any upset that comes up, we instantly break state and start again. So people aren't left going over and over and over it. It's, it's a very, part. yeah. So what we do is 
by changing the structure of the memory yeah we um we dissociate the the visuals and the auditories from the kinesthetics so the things yeah. that people are seeing and hearing that are going around and around in their mind from the feelings so the feelings um and the sympathetic feelings and the triggering and um everything are are you know they're just not there that's amazing so, yeah and I, th I think people find that quite difficult to mm. believe because often people have spent a long time um, working on this and, you know, doing this different and that, things. And a little bit more of this and that. <laughs> yeah, and just just still All having those problems. <laughs> yeah. And I, I think that's basically why I keep doing my NLP and um, spreading the word because it's just... Um, you know so amazing really that people can perhaps have well, i don't know 30 40 years of being triggered and traumatized not being able to go out not being able to work and then we do sort of perhaps even as much little as two or three hours of work and it's gone wow. and they're off doing their thing and um, takes up to five hours um in some people but it, it's a particular it's not a particularly um traumatic thing to do and you know it's it's interesting isn't it that sometimes these things are quite simple it's just discovering them and then putting them into place really it it, it is it is um, it is amazing how long we will suffer with trauma for i've been i've been thinking about this a lot recently because i've got a bit in the book about you know why do we hold on to it for so so long you mm. know if um if we had a problem with our hearts and we had to go in for an operation, we wouldn't hesitate. The doctor would make the recommendation, we'd go in for surgery, we would heal. But with trauma, we just seem to hang on to it and we refuse, the trauma denial element of it, refuse, go into such denial and refuse to actually deal with it, that it just yeah. feeds in on itself. And I think, because our unconscious mind is what is keeping it there. Yeah. Um, our unconscious mind is there to keep us safe. And therefore, if, if we go and do anything to try and sort it out, it might not be safe. So yeah. it might not be something that we particularly, our mind wants to do. So people need to be committed, need to um, recognize it and also ask themselves, I think, um, just purely from an NLP perspective, because if you, if if every behavior has a positive intention mm. and so if you're hanging on to it uh, hanging on to it despite knowing that there are ways to deal with it then there's there's a reason for that and that that reason is positive for that person mm. uh, you know maybe getting a lot of you know particularly veterans um people in the army may be getting a lot of support and um you know I don't want I don't mean attention in the right in the wrong sense but it's you know there is a there is a benefit from them still being ill because they they may still be able to access uh, funds to deal with it. it you know maybe they don't want to get a job so they they just live with it and say oh well I you know I've got this trauma and there's nothing could be done but that actually feels, there is yeah if that feels like the full force of trauma as well that feels like in it consumed mm. by it I talk, yeah. I talk about um, my trauma as ha having a traumatized mind and the trauma was so big that there was very little of my personality, my real personality left. And I had to shrink it down, make it small enough. So my untraumatized mind, the real me outshone the actual trauma that I was experiencing. And yeah. I see it a lot that the traumatized mind is so big and has taken over the personality to such a degree that they're just living in that traumatized state. Yeah. And, and, and then it's just a, it's a leap of faith, isn't it, to have yeah. someone say to you, uh, you know, we can deal with this relatively short, in a relatively short length of time and 
you know, would you like to do that with us? And, yeah. and people just don't necessarily believe that that's possible. Yeah, and it, and it really is because the mind is bloody clever at creating an illusion. Yes. Isn't it? It's like... Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to get, I don't want to get too woo woo about everything being an illusion but um, wow. it probably is isn't it it so, is yeah. it is but it is it is and that is the sneaky thing about trauma the ego the unconscious is it creates a false sense of security it's like a false positive mm -hmm. um yeah it can you think? Of, can you think of a time when you've um, when you suddenly woke up and realised? Because I think this is such a big conversation that actually what I'm thinking isn't right. It's an illusion, and I can change it. Mm. And did uh, did I have I thought of it? Yeah. Can I think of a time when I decided? Yes. Yeah. yeah, I think um, I think probably on my on my NLP practitioner course. I thought, yeah, wow. Sure you know I, I actually have control over well I've always had control over what what I choose to believe but now I've really got control and I understand how I've created things created my reality that I don't particularly like and I realize that it's really easy to create it in a different way and um, live happily ever after and yeah. I still get bumps when I think about it and I think <laughs> I think until I did that, honestly, I, I didn't uh, didn't know that. Um, but a big, big light bulb moment. And I think, you know, anyone that's listening that's been on NLP courses will probably have had the same um, experience in that you, you know you can do things to change your life and you can do those really quickly and you don't have to live in a world where you're not happy. I think that's the bit we need to bottle. That's that's the bit we need to bottle and to um, get across more than more than anything is that not seeing um, right or left, right or wrong, but getting into the color, living life through color rather than it being one end of the spectrum or the that end of the spectrum, but to bring people um, into the middle, just to do to do whatever they want to do, yeah, and live their life to the full and um i'm on a i'm on a mission of looking for joy nice so, yeah yeah i actually i actually went out to dinner with her last week as well but uh, it's a different sort of joy but that was quite joyful <laughs> <Love>. <laughs> well i mean i think one of the things that i've learned on my um trauma recovery journey is moving away from the criticism the negative self-talk the the harshness of the reality I lived in to living a life of joy, compassion, love, tolerance, forgiveness, which creates a very different personality, a very different way of life, a completely different way of seeing things. But I think when you're experience, experiencing trauma, you're in such a place of fear that you don't see, for me anyway, I couldn't see the world through those eyes. I was so trapped that love got what what's that compassion you've got to be joking forgiveness mm -hmm. are you having a laugh Do you yeah. know what I mean? yeah. <laughs> and I think I think at that point hopefully someone says to you well actually you can do something about it and eventually you'll get so fed up with what you're doing that your mind will go oh go on then have a go give it give that a go <laughs> and then then everything changes and uh yeah, I think, um, you know, myself included, of, you know, we've lived in lives of rules and, um, you know, what other people think is the right thing to do and all the shoulds and ought tos. So even if you haven't had trauma um, or a sort of milder version of trauma, then, you know, it's about realising that you are totally able to do whatever you want to do and live the way that you want to live. Mm. And that's just... Uh, I'm waffling on a bit now. I can't remember what I started the sentence with. <laughs> Don't worry, <laughs> it's fine. Talk to me a little bit, if it's okay, about um, timeline therapy. How does that work? Okay, so timeline therapy is um, something that um, removes the 
first removes the root cause of um, emotions. So um, the major negative emotions are anger, sadness, fear, hurt, and guilt. And um, we've all experienced those probably, you know, at a, a really, really early age, sort of under the age of three. And um, what we, what timeline therapy is about taking, going back to that time with the unconscious mind. So your unconscious mind knows where you decided to do that first bit of anger or fear or whatever, going back to that time and then just taking different learnings. Um, so, you know, that, you know, anger isn't, um, anger isn't useful. People were doing the best they could at, at, with all their resources. People aren't their behavior. I could just do this instead. And then all the anger would go away. And so people are, are sort of doing a, um, it's an active imagination process to go back to that first time um, and take the learnings and then, because the emotions tend to be chained together in a sort of gestalt sort of thing, mm. um, string of pearls. If you if you get rid of the first bit of that gestalt, then um, everything else drops off. It's a bit like if you play with beads when you were little, and you let go of one end of it, it just all ends up all over the floor. And um, once you've taken the learnings with your unconscious mind from that first event, then you literally you can't find any anger fear sadness uh, guilt you just can't find it and um, that applies in the future as well so that that means then that you've got choices and that you've you've let go of all the all the negatives all the decisions that you've made that um, aren't particularly useful for you um, as well as the emotions and they've just gone and that takes usually do it within a breakthrough process but it, the actual process of doing timeline takes two or three hours and then it's all gone and people go oh let me out of here I need to go and live my life you know <laughs> none of that is relevant anymore and people have spent you know uh, years in counseling and psychotherapy and doing uh, and in two or three hours it's all gone and um you know that's that's my experience with hundreds and hundreds of clients and uh, I just feel quite that's why I feel passionate about it going back to the original question it's just because it's so effective and it yeah. helps people's lives yeah um, amazing do you is there a piece of work that you do around so this can have such an amazing impact but it's I can imagine for some people that it's like losing a right or a left arm or losing both arms that sounds a bit cruel but it there's part of you that you've held on for such a long time and then it doesn't exist anymore it's not there to the same intensity that it was before is there a piece of work around helping them shape what the next thing is absolutely because you know if you if you get rid of all the negatives and the, quite a few people have been walking around with those so that's what's filling their brains most of the yeah. time that there is a bit of a void um, so you need to replace it with goals and action plans and keeping your boundaries and just going for what you really want and living your life to the full, that um, that joy. But it does need some content to do that. Otherwise, yeah. people go, oh, feels a bit strange. I'm just sitting here. There's nothing much going on. And, uh, you know, where am I going? <laughs> Who am I? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> yeah. you need you know, people, you know, and, and the people that come and do timeline therapy and, you know, have a breakthrough, usually they know where they want to go, but their unconscious minds and all the negatives that are keeping them safe and um, taking them back to that, you know, the illusion-y sort of stuff that um, they've put, they've created in their head they know where they want to go, but their unconscious mind's keeping them safe. So it's really a matter of just getting the unconscious mind on board and going, wow, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm fab, I'm, I'm great, I can do whatever I want, I'm going to go off and, uh, and do this and, you know, I'm going to have a happy family life, I'm going to have a great career, I'm going to run a great business, you know, I'm just going to be happy is the ultimate, I suppose, isn't it? And, yeah. Uh, love, yeah. I think yeah. love's coming quite a lot as as the emotion isn't it so, yeah. yeah yeah 
it's i think it's just i think it's absolutely staggering how the past can affect the future to such a degree mm. if we don't if we're not able to connect with and understand and let go of that emotional charge the trauma emotional experience what whatever it is that sort of left that imprint on our system mm -hmm. um how much that will impact on our on our future it, it, and it's huge it's absolutely it's the reason i do what i do it's yeah. huge having spent 24 20 more than that probably years giving people antidepressants and sick notes and mm. uh, you know going a lot it's, it's almost like I suppose one of the things that I haven't said is that NLP is about the patterns. Right. So it's, it's not necessarily how awful people's life has been, which I, I used to have people coming and telling me and going over and over and not, not moving on and mm -hmm. me agreeing and everything. NLP yeah. is about, well, so what is the pattern? What is the belief that you've got that we can just take that belief out and then everything changes? Um. So it's just totally different, really. So, yeah. yeah. So that's a that that's a great skill set, isn't it? You've got the the historical stuff in terms of when you were in the NHS and having that experience of working probably with thousands of people over your lifetime, I would have thought. Yeah. And then it's it's beautiful to see how that's transitioned and how you've moved on and how you've learned and you've learned new skills. And realize how that can go back into um, mainstream NHS mental health services. Yeah. And I, 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 you know, I just implore anyone that's listening to it that is in mainstream services to understand how easy it is to do things differently and that, mm -hmm. you know, the drugs and the um, endless going over what's gone wrong isn't particularly helpful what what it needs is for that for the you know for the 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 thinking the neurons you know the brain i say the brain although it's probably the whole of your body isn't it it's to just think do it differently yeah yeah and i i do think the health service mental health social services the the even the police service the big strategy statutory organizations, they normalize trauma, I think, by default, because mm. people are mm. constantly having to talk about it. They're constantly having to share it and it never gets solved. Yeah. So exactly. it normalizes the experience, which isn't really a good, it's not a good thing. So it, so it just reinforces that. And there's no solution. Yeah, <laughs> really I traumatizing. Yeah. <laughs> And, and, you know, I just hope that the more people do things like, you know, access things like NLP mm. uh, and realise how quickly things can change is, is um, you know, then the word will spread and, um, you know, people's mental health will be so much better. Yeah, yeah. What's one thing that you would really like people to take on board? Um, the one thing that I'd like people to take on board is that your world doesn't have to be as your world is. And if it's not working for you, then get some help to um, think differently. And it's very quick to be able to think differently if that's what you want. So you don't have to live like you are now if it's not working for you. You can go for the joy and the love and the fulfilled life and uh, yeah, and, and believe in it. And if joy and love feels like a very far off, far away, Bridget can definitely help you reach that point. It is, we have definitely. both been through horrendous things. And once you do make that connection, it's, it's for life. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's, it's for life. Um, you won't look back. <laughs> exactly. And, you know, that's what we want for our life, isn't it? Yeah. It's, it's, it's definitely what I want for other people. It mm. is much easier to um, come from a place of love and compassion than it is to come from a place of fear and judgment. 
it yeah. takes a lot less energy it's it's such an extreme it's such an extreme different difference definitely definitely and it's um do you know what, what was cross do you mind if i go back a little bit mm. um I always remember going on a training course that talked about memories and illusions and uh, things like that. And uh, I, I'm quite a big fan of police dramas and things. So I watch oh, things, so am I. Yeah, like, so am I. things like Luther and, yeah. you know, Line of Duty and anything, anything along those lines. And I sit there watching this television and I, I watch it through my hands because that then dissociates me from it. But if I don't do that, I feel like I'm in it. Oh wow! And then, and then when the um, when the adverts come on, and you've got to go upstairs to the loo, then you're checking the wardrobes, you're looking under the bed, <laughs> <laughs> because it becomes a reality, doesn't it? That 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 takes us to, yeah. And that's what happens in our life, and actually, it's not real. Yeah. None of it is. None of it is real. It's just we we've decided that it's real and you know we, we can just choose to do it differently I, I, I sort of do that but yeah. uh, <laughs> oh the music's changing I'm gonna do that but, but, <laughs> but it's real it's all it's all film for um, and that's what our lives are like really we can we can decide what reality we want and what we what we don't want yeah and I think once we figured that out that we can decide which reality we want to play in it it makes life um very interesting much more interesting yes. yeah it's a, it's a very interesting life that's yeah. my, one of my favorite words I sort of most things go away over my head and I just sort of look and think oh well, that's really interesting yeah I wonder what's going on there and, yeah, yeah becomes really interesting so talking about the tv i used to get triggered a lot by films and the tv emotionally triggers and i'd start act, i'd start acting out because i hadn't in the back of my mind i was um linking it to sexual abuse but i hadn't realized that that what was that's what was going on i would constantly get triggered by you know page three of the sun or any nudity on tv i, I just yeah. lose it yeah, yeah 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 and uh yeah and it's, it's a nice place to not not have that anymore oh, isn't it yeah now I can see naked bodies anytime and I'm just like yeah whatever mm. <laughs> whereas before I, I should just go mad <laughs> I, I, I think the other thing for people listening to this is to just be really aware of what happens when you've got kids and um, and or, or you're in contact with anyone really that you know what you do and say can have a big effect on on people particularly kids whose neurology is still developing and uh, yeah have less choice I guess um, yeah I always say that fear breeds more fear trauma breeds more trauma anxiety breeds more anxiety they are very close friends to one another um, and I think they uh, have a tendency to feed in, feed in on themselves. Mm. And of course, when, once you've sorted the trauma out and you're on your journey to joy and love, then you become quite conscious of yep. the consciousness of what's actually going on in your head, in your body. Yeah. So that you, you can actually choose what you want. Um, and you stop it, don't you? You make a decision to actually, I'm not having it, I'm not having that anymore. I can choose now not to have that thinking, those thoughts, that behavior. I can take responsibility for my actions. Yes. yes. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Which is uh, amazing. Mm. Yeah, it is it is amazing. Why on earth it took me like 50 years to figure it out? I have no idea. <laughs> like, okay. I know. It's about the same amount of time for me. Yeah. I'm trying to it, would, it would be great to be able to get into schools and to, you know, teach teach young kids, isn't it? Yeah. They've got yeah. choices. And uh, unfortunately, it takes some people a while to get there, but then the rest of their life like we've got we've got a long time left haven't we? yeah so. yeah well I'm like you now I'm just not okay I'm not saying you're desperate 
am I desperate? I'm keen to share it. I'm keen yes. to share that life doesn't have to be this way. It doesn't have to be that complicated. You can recover and heal quickly. Don't do what Definitely. I do, which was go into therapy and all sorts of things for like 40 years. Yeah. It, it's we weren't aware that there was anything else were we no i think that's i think that's the thing i i was just thinking why was i not aware but there is there is this whole piece and i'll, I'll think i'll finish on this because i'm conscious of your time is there is this piece about what we don't know we don't know and if we don't have yeah. access to the education then how can we ever make the changes it is that we need to to make because we've been programmed from yeah. like news journalists, journalism, yeah. um, parents, whatever. We've been programmed, haven't we? And we mm. don't know there's anything outside of our beliefs. We create mm. our reality with what we believe to be true. Mm. And it's just what we've, you know, constructed to have some way of organising how we do things. So basically, we've got to get these things, as you said, more these tools, these techniques, more mainstream. That's that's the answer. The educational, the educational piece, making it more common, not Absolutely. so pharmaceutical, not so not so many, um, not so much talking therapy <laughs> for years, <laughs> drugs. <laughs> But to really get in proactive ways of doing things that change behavior much more quickly, not like sticking yeah. plasters, which, sticking plasters, which is what's really available now to people. That's what I think people prescribe is the sticking plaster. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, and because they don't know any, they don't know any different. No. Yeah. That. Yeah. Yeah, maybe our learnings now have just advanced to such a degree. Mm. I think, um, you know, running NLP training courses, I've had quite a few doctors on courses and they yeah. now feel differently about people creating illnesses and how to help people to think differently about health. But maybe that's the way, certainly um, maybe one of the ways I can help. Way in. Mm yeah and you've just made me think now um because i have a sort of like a graduate group for people that have trained with me that i'm now inviting yeah. other people to and i'm just thinking well these people all know this so it's just about making sure they're using it yeah but what about people that don't use it and how can we actually um how, you know it's almost like uh a raising awareness about things like NLP group. Yeah. That we can have these interesting discussions in just to raise consciousness of what what we, what is possible. Yeah, absolutely. Abs absolutely. I think we're on that on that quest, aren't we, of how can we mm. how can we emulate, make it bigger, share, share the learnings maybe it's something that we can have a think about doing together maybe yeah yeah that would be great i'd love that yeah mm. yeah there's a, there's a commitment on on yeah. uh, on recording <laughs> yeah <laughs> how can people get hold of you um so my website is um for my normal business is www um drbridgetnlp.com so that's d r B R I D G E T N L P dot com. Um, from the community interest company, um, it's www dot um, trauma breakthrough collective uk. So all the contact details, all contact forms, all information is on there. Or um, I don't know, is it all right to give my phone number? Out? Of course it is. Uh, only if you're happy. Is it on the yeah. website? Um, is it on the website? Mm, possibly not. But, uh, you know, it, it, in fairness, uh, I'm okay with that. If you're so, okay, that's fine. If you're okay, yeah. I'm okay. So it's 07973 
635102. Fantastic. And I have because a contact in the NHS who I can um, message and oh, let cool. him know about um, RTM. Lovely. I'm sure he will reach out and have a conversation with you. So I can, I'll have a think as well if I can think of anybody else in my network. Fabulous. And yeah. So anyone that's interested, just give me a ring or go on the website and pop me a, a, a message in the contact form. Be fine. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you so much for your time today. As always, it's been lovely talking to you. Yeah. And it once, once, we'll this madness, once this madness is over, I've just sort of made a, a sort of decision. Maybe I'll come and see you. Oh, wow. Yes. <laughs> I think we should do um, some sort of a, a retreat, a um, something, yeah. Yeah. Trauma lines. Lovely. Hold on, oh, my God, that's another commitment. Look at that. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's been lovely being, lovely being. It's been lovely talking to you. As, <laughs> you as well. Take care. Yeah, and you. Bye.